Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a walkthrough video of how I recreated the Netflix intro. So, first I got this reference photo and I just traced over it with the pen tool, making each line on a separate layer. For the middle part, you can see that I've gone beyond the top and the bottom so that we can use a mask to get the correct shape. I've created two more shapes which will be our masks, which will allow us to get the flat top and that curved bottom. To our end shapes, I've added two set mats and selected both of our mask layers, and then I've copied these to the other end shapes. To create that little shadow in the middle, you'll notice there's a bit more shadow towards the centre and less at the top and the bottom, so we're not going to use the drop shadow effect here. Instead, I've duplicated this middle shape, made it black, and then I've played with the tapering, which you can find in the stroke. This will allow us to get the same effect once we add a blur and turn down the opacity a bit, and I've put that below the layer to create our shadow. For the animating on effect, I've just added masks to each of the strokes of the end. Then I've keyframed mask path and moved the mask up and down, and this will reveal our strokes. You can copy mask for the shadow as well. For when the end disappears, you'll notice there's this kind of stripy dissolving effect going on. To achieve this, we'll use a similar technique to before, but we'll use separate shape layers for the masks instead of using a mask within each shape layer. By adding the rough on edges effect to this shape layer will allow us to replicate that effect we want. I've put border right up, sharpness down and stretch width or height to a low minus number to get that desired effect. Then put the mass layer above the stroke you want it to apply to and select alpha inverted matte. For some reason I've got this sharp straight line but by making our mass layer 3D will create the nice smooth transition that we want. All our layers will need to be 3D anyway so I've just set them all to 3D and I'm using classic 3D for this. I then added a null object and paired everything to it and made it a 3D layer. This is what's going to create the end moving towards the camera. I've keyframed its Z position and made sure it finishes so the first stroke of the end fills the entire frame and I've gave it some nice easing to start with. To create the multicolored line section, I first added a shape layer which covers the whole screen you can do this by just double clicking on the shape button. I then applied the turbulent noise effect. You can use fractal noise as well, but I had a look and apparently turbulent noise is like the updated version of fractal noise, so I'm just using that. This is what is going to help us create that effect. I chose Rocky and then unchecked the uniform scaling so that I can stretch out the height to maximum, which is 10,000. Now, if I play with the width, you can see how we can sort of recreate that Netflix transition they use with the, with the lines. But when we scale the width quite wide, you can see that it's not 100% straight. There's some curvature to the lines, which isn't what we want. So to stop this, I applied the mosaic effect, which basically pixelates the image. But we can choose the number of horizontal and vertical blocks. By only having vertical blocks, this will make sure we only have vertical lines. And if we set the number of vertical blocks to the number of pixels in the width of our composition, this should create the effect we want without losing any quality. Next, we want to find a black section which is in the very middle so that when we scale up the width, it finishes on a black frame. So I'm finding this by rotating the evolution parameter and I found a white part which was right in the middle. So I just click the invert button at the top and that switched the colors around and made it black. If you're struggling to find something, play around with the brightness and contrast. To animate this, we want to keyframe scale width as well as subscaling. Subscaling, if you play around with it, makes it look a bit more 3D as it's like multiple scaling layers and it gives a bit more depth, which looks quite nice. You can also play around with keyframing the brightness and the contrast to make it end on a black frame. Now it's not very colourful this, so to add some colour, we're going to add a new shape layer like we did before and we're going to put this below our noise layer and I've just called it colour. We're going to set the track mat to luma mat as well. I've made our colour layer to have a gradient fill which goes from red to yellow but as it grows I've keyframed the gradient so that it changes to incorporate more colours like in the original. So yeah I'm quite happy with this and I've pre-comped it and called it lines. So back to the other end stuff you'll see I've made the lines layer 3D and paired it to the null. I've then scaled it down on the x-axis so that it covers the first part of the end. By selecting Preserve and Line Transparency, we'll keep it within the bounds of the first end stroke. I've also keyframed the colour of the end to go from red to black when it comes towards the camera. 
I've repeated this for the right part of the end, but instead of the preserve and line transparency button, I've duplicated the stroke and used an alpha mat. For the middle part, it's the same again, but I've just rotated the lines so that they're parallel to the middle stroke. Also, I've keyframed the opacity of the lines at the start so they don't just appear, they gradually come in. Finally, I've added a couple of manual lines at the end just to add a little bit more depth and stretch it out a little bit more. I basically just used the pen tool, added a glow effect as well as a bit of a blur and I've made the lines go from the very middle to one of the sides off screen and I've also made the stroke width increase as it does that and this makes it look like it's coming towards the camera. You can do this multiple times, I've just done it twice but the thing to bear in mind is make sure they go from the very centre and you can do this by using the align button. And that's pretty much it, just add some sound effects and there you have it. So I hope you like this video and learnt some new techniques. Let me know in the comments if you like this style or whether I skim over things too much. I try to keep these videos a bit shorter. I intend to do more breakdowns of famous animations so subscribe for that and also let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to do any specific ones. You can also follow my Instagram. Thank you and see you in the next one.